Welcome to this playthrough of Combat Mission Fortress Italy's Triona campaign. This is a six scenario campaign pitting the American 1st Infantry Division against the German Panzer Grenadiers in Sicily. It takes place in July and August of 1943. I wanted to play this campaign because of the unusual terrain. It uh, highlights the mountainous terrain of the Sicilian campaign. This image here of Triona shows the undulating steep terrain that featured prominently in this campaign. Triona was important because it was the linchpin of the Etna line, which was the defensive line covering the German withdrawal via the Straits of Messina. As this excerpt from the U.S. Army Military History Center shows, it was a tough fight for the American Army. But first a spoiler alert. This is a pretty good scenario and I highly recommend it. But during my playthrough, I will be giving away many of the key surprises in this scenario. So if you intend to play this scenario, don't watch this video first. These are the factors that I should consider when coming up for a plan for this scenario. Now in this particular scenario, there are no civilian considerations, although some combat mission titles do incorporate civilian considerations in the game. For this scenario, I have to remove all German units on the North Ridge and Hill 1234 and occupy them. I also have to pass through the North Pass and the ruins as shown on this map. For orientation purposes, here's the North Ridge, the North Pass, Hill 1234, and the ruins. To accomplish this objective, I have a reinforced rifle company. Now my company consists of three platoons of three squads each, each squad with 12 men. Each squad has a single Browning automatic rifle, or BAR, which fires 30 caliber rounds from a 20 round magazine. Unlike the bolt action rifle carried by the German Pixel Truppen, the American Pixel Truppen are equipped with a M1 Garand, a 30 caliber semi-automatic weapon. So although the BAR is completely inadequate as a squad automatic weapon, especially in comparison to the German light machine guns. The fact is is that my soldiers with their M1s are still able to put down an impressive amount of suppressive fire. Further, the fact that they are large squads of 12 men means that I can break them down into maneuver and fire team. The American Rifle Company also has a heavy weapons platoon with two medium machine guns and three 60 millimeter mortars, giving it additional firepower. For this scenario, the rifle company will also have attached to it an additional platoon of Stuart tanks, five in total, and a section of reconnaissance troops. The reconnaissance troops have an 81 millimeter mortar that's on map, a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on a Jeep, two Jeeps with 30 caliber machine guns, and a scout car with a 50 caliber machine gun. Finally, I have copious amounts of artillery. Off map, I have two batteries of 105 millimeter howitzers, each with 140 rounds of ammunition. I also have three two tube sections of 81 millimeter mortars off map, each section with 100 rounds of ammunition. The opposing forces will be some German Panzer Grenadiers. Now these will be dismounted, so at least I won't have to be worrying about you know, tanks or, or armored personnel carriers. However, they will have anti-tank guns and mortars. And because they're Germans, they'll have machine guns. They'll have a lot of machine guns. Now the scenario designer, bless his black little heart, was deliberately vague on the exact nature of the German forces I'd be facing. So I did a little bit of research. Because I'm only a reinforced company of US infantry, my estimate is that I'm only going to be facing a reinforced platoon of German Panzer Grenadiers. So now a platoon will have three sections of infantry. That means I'll be facing at least six light machine guns. The scenario also mentions mortars. Well, the German rifle company has two organic 81 millimeter mortars, but the battalion has a battery of 120 millimeter mortars so I may also have to face those. The scenario also mentions anti-tank guns. Well, the German Panzer Grenadier Battalion has a battery of three 50 millimeter anti-tank guns. I'll probably be facing at least one and possibly two of those. 
and because this is the World War II German Army we are talking about, they just aren't dressed properly unless they also have a light machine gun or two. And for reasons I'll get into during my train analysis, I'm suspicious that the Germans also have at least a section of heavy machine guns attached to this unit. So that gives two more heavy machine guns. Despite the German vanishing machine guns, they lack one critical weapon. They don't have a personal anti-tank weapon such as the Panzerfaust, and that will be important as I have tanks. Now for the terrain analysis. I will be attacking uphill towards hill 1234 uh, along this road here. Uh, it's a fairly steep rise as you can see. Uh, hill 1234 does dominate the battlefield. It, to the south side it has these woods here. Now northern European forests like the one pictured here have pretty good cover and concealment. Uh, there's a lot of ground cover, the trees are pretty close together. That's not the kind of forest we have on this map. This Mediterranean pine forest has less ground cover and the trees are further apart, so it's not going to give me nearly as good cover and concealment. And that's the kind of forest we have here. One important terrain feature to note is this ridge right here that runs perpendicular to the American axis of advance. I may be able to use this ridge line to shield my forces, especially my observers, from observation from the German positions at Hill 1234. American forces moving from their start positions to assault the North Ridge will have a very steep ascent. Worst, it looks like they will be under observation from any German forces on Hill 1234. And in fact, it looks like the Germans may have the ability to put on some grazing fire on any American forces coming up this way. The good news is that the reverse slope of the ridge offers a partially covered or concealed approach to both the North Pass and to Hill 1234. It's not entirely concealed, but it will offer at least some cover and concealment. However, once we cross the reverse slope, German units on Hill 1234 will have an excellent field of fire for units moving from this direction. Also from the hill you can see that German forces on Hill 1234 have excellent fields of fire looking down the ridge. In fact, German units below the crest of Hill 1234 have very good observation of the approaches past that one perpendicular ridge line I mentioned. In this image I've taken away the vegetation from the tree so you can see the background better. I've also drawn a blue line along the crest of that ridge that's running perpendicular to the American axis of advance. What this shows is that German forces located here could have shots on American forces advancing towards the North Ridge from behind that perpendicular ridge, both here and here. This position will have to get some attention from the American artillery. Looking at the ruins, it looks like the east face is fairly steep. It also looks like the western face is fairly flat, so that may be the angle of approach to, uh, or the avenue of approach for that particular objective. As far as an approach to Hill 1234, the, uh, there's a depression to the south of the road here. You can see it from Hill 1234. It looks like it'll be a relatively covered approach until we get to the tree line, at least from the crest of the hill. Uh, so I can probably use this as a way to get to the base of Hill 1234 without being a Observed. It also is hidden from view from the North Pass, so any German troops there can't shoot into my flanks. Based on the terrain analysis and the German organization, I believe this is what their force laydown looks like. There's probably a section of infantry up here on the North Ridge. Because of the isolated nature of this position and the relatively poor fields of fire, I don't think there will be any anti-tank guns. 
Here at the North Pass, I believe there will probably be at least a section of infantry and maybe an anti-tank gun because this position allows uh, support to the North Ridge and also down the road. I believe the main German forces will be located here in the wooded area to the south of the summit of Hill 1234. From this position, anti-tank guns can dominate the center part of the battlefield and even extending into the approaches to the North Ridge. This also offers some concealment and uh, some uh, cover for the German forces there. So I'm estimating at least one anti-tank gun and probably two sections of infantry. And then on the hill top at Hill 1234, I estimate there to be at least one section of infantry and possibly some anti-tank guns or heavy machine guns. In these positions, they, they all have interlocking fields of fire. Uh, as you can see, they can cover each other. And so I'm basically going to have to pull apart each of these positions one by one. Weather conditions are hazy, warm, and dry with a gentle wind from the west. What this means is that there's likely to be a lot of dust and that obscurance like smoke will remain in the air and effective for an extended period of time. The warm weather also means that my troops will tire more quickly if I move them fast, so I'll have to take my time. And speaking of time, I have two hours to accomplish my mission objectives, so I have all the time in the world to do what I need to do. So here's the plan I came up with. I expect the main German resistance to be on Hill 1234 and on the line of trees to the south of the hill. Therefore I have two TRPs set up on these positions. Because I'm confident the Germans are on Hill 1234, I will start the game with a harassing barrage of 105mm shell fire to keep their heads down. It will only be about two to three rounds a minute because I need it to last for a long time. My plan is based on using my superiority in artillery and armor to destroy each German position from a distance before advancing with the American infantry and then closing to seize the objectives. Under the cover of the 105 mm harassing fire, I'll throw a line of observation posts across that ridge. Their purpose is to identify German anti-tank gun positions and to spot artillery on those positions. As long as the German units on the North Ridge don't come down from the North Ridge, these observation positions should be safe. However, just to make sure, I'm going to send the 3rd platoon up to just below the crest of the hill to screen the observation positions. This will also put the 3rd platoon in a position to jump off for an attack on the north ridge. Meanwhile, 1st and 2nd platoon will advance across the valley into the woods to the south of Hill 1234. Phase 2 will begin once the German anti-tank guns have been identified and eliminated by the American artillery. This will open the way for a section of Stuarts to assist 3rd platoon in seizing the North Ridge. Meanwhile, the 2nd section of Stuarts and the reconnaissance section will advance the ridge line and provide direct fire support to supplement the artillery barrage on the German positions. Meanwhile, 1st platoon will advance to the east until its right flank is resting on the road and then it and 3rd platoon will advance north until they achieve contact with the German forces. Meanwhile, 3rd platoon with support from the Stuarts and the Heavy Weapons platoon will seize the North Ridge. At this point I will also bring up an observation post to bring down mortar fire on the North Pass. Phase 3 will begin with 3rd platoon and the Stuarts moving to the reverse slope and advancing against the North Pass, supported by the heavy weapons platoon. Meanwhile, 1st and 2nd platoon, supported by a section of Stuarts, will clear the Germans from the slopes below Hill 1234. Once the Germans are cleared from the slopes, I'll also send 1st platoon to the ruins to clear it. Also, I'm a little concerned about the exposed right flank of 1st platoon. 
it seems that this is uh, an invitation to a German counterattack from the east. So I'll be leaving a section of infantry to provide a tripwire. Phase 4 will begin with an advance by 3rd platoon and their armor support to a jump off position to the north of the hill. Simultaneously, I'll be hitting hill 1, 2, 3, 4 with both batteries of 105s. When the bombardment lifts, I'll use the entire company plus the armor to seize the hill. So that's the plan. How did it survive contact with the enemy? At game start, I began moving my forward observers and other spotters to the ridge line. And they dismount and advance to their observation positions. Meanwhile, harassing fire from my 105 millimeter howitzers begins to fall on hill 1234. And 3rd platoon begins its movement to just below the crest of the north ridge. Scouts are sent out ahead of the main body to ensure the platoon is not caught in an ambush and also to verify that the German 50mm guns can't fire at them. After about two minutes, the scouts reach the crest of the hill without any contact. Meanwhile, scouts from 1st platoon advance towards the base of hill 1234 and the forward observers are dropped off just below the ridge line begin their observations. With the harassing fire continuing, the rest of 3rd platoon follows their scouts to the crest of the north ridge. While under the cover of the artillery fire, the observation teams try to get to their positions unobserved by the Germans. Five minutes into the scenario, the observers begin to notice some of the details of the German entrenchments on Hill 1234. A minute later, 3rd platoon begins to spot some of the German positions on the north ridge and begins to engage. Soon other sections of the platoon engage, but they have no tank support because the German anti-tank gun positions have not yet been identified by the forward observers. After about a minute of being plinged at by the American troops, the Germans on the hill decide they've had enough and open up with an MG42, immediately pinning a section. Nine minutes into the game, the German anti-tank gun positions have still not been identified, and this is holding up my advance of the armor to support my infantry. The good news is that some German entrenchments near where I expect an ATG position to be have been spotted. This position will get some attention from the artillery. Ten minutes into the game, the main body of 1st platoon is entering the woods at the base of Hill 1234 and the company commander is arriving to establish an observation position looking at the North Pass. Soon rounds began falling near the suspected anti-tank gun positions. While advancing east towards their line of departure, 1st platoon takes fire from their flank resulting in a second casualty. Apparently the German positions are further downhill than what I had anticipated. I'm going to have to change their axis of advance a little bit further to the west than what I had anticipated. Fourteen minutes into this scenario, the suspected German anti-tank gun position is being pummeled pretty good by 105mm fire. First platoon begins to assault the German machine gun position that opened fire on them. Although I don't have the Stuarts in support yet, I believe that this machine gun position is relatively unsupported by other German positions and so I think I can suppress it with rifle and bar fire. Although some casualties are taken, 2nd platoon is deploying to the left of 1st platoon and should be able to provide flanking fire on this position. Soon rifle grenades and bar fire suppress the German position. After 15 minutes of game time and 2 minutes of heavy bombardment on the suspected anti-tank gun positions, I sprint one Stuart tank up the north ridge to begin assisting 3rd platoon. I send the second tank about 10 seconds behind it to take advantage of the dust cloud that the first tank is creating on its drive up the hill. Both tanks arrive at the top of the ridge and begin shelling the German positions.
And with the German anti-tank gun position believed to be suppressed, I move up the reconnaissance section and the second section of Stewart's to the firing line to begin supporting the attack on Hill 1234. However, in a change to the plan, one Stewart is sent to support 1st and 2nd platoon on their attack through the woods. 16 minutes into this scenario, this is the situation. Harassing 105 fire is falling on the German positions on Hill 1234 and the German anti-tank gun below the hill summit is believed to have been silenced. 1st platoon has established an observation post on its right flank at the base of Hill 1234. However, during the movement of 1st platoon's main body, it has become engaged and has attempted to advance to the northeast to create room for the 2nd platoon to file in on its left flank. A section of Stewart's and the recon section has formed a base of fire on the ridge line along with several OPs. One Stewart has been sent to assist 1st platoon in its advance. On the north ridge, 3rd platoon and a section of Stewart's are beginning their attack to take the German positions there. That Stewart will be needed in the woods. A previously undetected machine gun position opens up, causing two casualties. But the appearance of the Stewart should swing the balance in this battle. Meanwhile, on the North Ridge, the Stewarts are suppressing the Germans dug in on the hill there. And under the covering fire of the Stuarts, 3rd platoon begins to advance to seize the North Ridge. But all is not roses. I had assumed that the 105mm bombardment would have suppressed the German anti-tank guns. I was wrong, and a well-placed shot from a 50mm gun takes out one of the American reconnaissance jeeps. Yes, despite 105mm, 37mm, 50 cal, and 30 cal fire, the German anti-tank gun has survived. At least now, its position is known. On the North Ridge, a previously undetected German position opens up, pinning one of my squads. The German positions are well concealed, frequently being discovered only when they open fire. To provide additional fire support for the attack on the North Ridge, a 30 cal armed jeep is sent to the base of Hill 1234 to provide fire support. However, a previously undetected German machine gun position on the south face of the North Ridge opens up, putting an end to this adventure. American artillery continues to fall on the German anti-tank gun positions. Surely they are suppressed now. At 19 minutes of game time, the first line of entrenchments on the North Ridge falls. On Hill 1234, a second Stuart arrives and begins to suppress German positions. This return fire is effective and the German Pixel Truppen begin to abandon these entrenchments. The bombardment by 105mm howitzers ends but 81mm mortars now join in on the attack on the German anti-tank gun positions. All the while, the German positions at the top of Hill 1234 continue to receive harassing fire from the 105mm howitzers. An American 30 cal tries to suppress the newly discovered German machine gun position at the eastern edge of the North Ridge, but is quickly suppressed as engaging in a German machine gun position on higher ground is never a good idea. This position will need the Stuarts to take out, and until that German anti-tank gun is confirmed destroyed, I can't bring the Stuarts up. Third platoon's advance is marred by a friendly fire incident when two soldiers are hit by shrapnel from a Stuarts 37mm gun. This is the situation 21 minutes into the scenario. Supported by a single Stuart, 1st and 2nd platoon are slowly advancing uphill 1234. 1st platoon has sent out a small outpost on its right flank to warn of any German attack from that direction. Supported by a section of Stuarts, 3rd platoon is gradually gaining control of the North Ridge against German resistance. But a minute later, and confident that the German anti-tank guns have been dealt with, 
I aggressively moved the Stuarts forward to eliminate the last German resistance on the North Ridge. However, as discovered by the scouts providing fire support to the attack on Hill 1234, the German anti-tank gun is still in the game. The advance of the Stuarts along the North Ridge reveals a second line of positions near the North Pass, including a German anti-tank gun. A 30 cal is tasked with suppressing this position until the tanks can be brought up. While 2nd platoon advances uphill 1234, it receives fire from a previously undiscovered position near the North Pass. Although ineffectual, this inflating fire is a significant threat and forces me to withdraw 2nd platoon further into the woods. Meanwhile, 1st and 2nd platoon continue their advance uphill 1234, but at a price. German mortar fire begins to fall, injuring several men. But the advance continues, and the 1st platoon closes within grenade range of a German position. And the American fire superiority begins to have noticeable effects. 22 minutes into the game, the last German entrenchments on the North Ridge fall. While on Hill 1234, a German position also falls, while tank and infantry suppress other positions. 23 minutes into the scenario, a section from 3rd Platoon attempts to help suppress the German machine gun position located near the North Pass. However, the 50mm German anti-tank gun is still in the game and a single round decimates the section and a second round finishes the job. I have misunderestimated the quality of the German entrenchments. With this incentive, 3rd platoon scurries to the reverse slope to get cover from the anti-tank gun, but casualties are taken from grazing machine gun fire. Because the direct fire from this position has been ineffective, the remaining steward leaves to go to Hill 1234. And in the fight on Hill 1234, the Americans are winning fire superiority, but the Germans are remarkably tough. Thus far, I've been reluctant to use my 60mm mortars in a direct fire roll. This is because of the threat posed to them by return fire. However, 105 and 81 mm fire has not been able to stop the German anti-tank gun, so I'm going to give the 60 mm a chance. One positions itself just below the crest of the ridge and begins laying down a barrage on the anti-tank gun position. And this fire proves to be remarkably accurate and effective. However, the Germans have mortars too, and some of them begin falling near the American troops on Hill 1234. Despite causing some casualties, the bombardment is pretty light and does not stop the American advance, screened by smoke grenades and supported by tanks. Having seen the light anti-tank gun at the North Pass being wheeled away, the Stuarts begin to rush the position. This is the sit rep 26 minutes into the scenario. 3rd platoon has pushed the defenders off the north ridge and are advancing on the north pass. 1st and 2nd platoon are slowly advancing uphill 1234, supported by a section of Stuart tanks. A 3rd Stuart has been sent from the ridge to the base of hill 1234, where it will then proceed to the western slope to provide fire support against the German forces located in the North Pass. Two trucks with additional ammunition are being sent to the base of Hill 1234 to resupply 1st and 2nd platoon. More German positions fall using the tank, infantry, and smoke combination. Meanwhile, a heavy machine gun located on Hill 1234 forces American troops advancing 
on the reverse slope of the north ridge to retreat. However, the 60mm mortar continues to lay down effective fire on the German anti-tank gun position. Over at the North Pass, tank fire from the Stuarts is reducing the German resistance. Before the mortar team runs out of ammunition, the Stuarts rush past the last line of German defenders and push on towards the anti-tank gun position. Although the position is currently being bombarded by the 60mm mortars, the armor of the Stuarts should be enough to protect them from this. Reaching the crest just below the position, they began to suppress the German defenders inside. The loss of multiple positions dramatically reduces the ability of the Germans to provide mutually supporting fires, and their losses mount. On the North Pass, the Stuarts continue to put the defenders' positions under fire, while the Stuart on Hill 1234 takes the German North Pass and a tank gun position under fire. The German Pixel Truppen are forced to retreat from the North Pass, but their defensive positions do not give them a covered retreat route, and they are decimated by tank fire. The heavy suppressive fire by 1st and 2nd platoons means that many of their units are low on ammo, and trucks are brought forward to resupply. This is the situation 21 minutes into the game. 1st and 2nd platoon are 160 meters south of the summit of Hill 1234. The ruins to the east are unscouted, and German forces there if any, are unknown. First and second platoon are low on ammunition and are beginning to resupply. The German fortifications on Hill 1234 are continuing to receive harassing 105mm fire. German resistance at the North Pass is believed to have been eliminated with the Germans either being destroyed or withdrawing, and third platoon with its section of Stuarts is advancing. But unexpectedly, a German counterattack develops not from the east, of Hill 1234, where I had partially expected it, but in the rear left flank of 3rd platoon, where it was completely unexpected. I estimate the German troops in this counterattack to be at least platoon size and strength, but it would be foolish of the Germans to attack uphill unsupported. Until the composition of the counterattack is determined, and given the suppression of the German forces on Hill 1234, the south side of the ridge is likely safer than the north side of the ridge, at least for right now. When the lead steward tops the rise, something with a big gun takes a shot at him. They've got a cave troll! Actually, it's not a cave troll. Rather, it's a that whose name shall not be pronounced, type 233, otherwise known as a strummel. It has the same short barreled 75mm gun that the early Mark IVs had, so it can easily penetrate the armor of a steward. But it has less than 6 tenths of an inch of armor and so the steward can easily penetrate it, and it does. The German pixel troopen abandon the Strummel, leaving the American armor unchallenged. Because of this new threat from the Northwest, the steward shown the German positions from Hill 1234 is sent to reinforce the tank section on the ridge. En route, it almost runs over a previously unknown German position demonstrating just how well concealed these German positions are in this scenario. The German pixel troopen who have been occupying some of the fortifications on the south face of the north slope began abandoning their positions. But the lack of cover that has plagued the Americans is also a curse to them. The American infantry reached the last line of emplacements below the crest of Hill 1234, and the Stuarts then moved forward to reconnoiter the emplacements at the top of the hill. The lifting of the Stuart's suppressive fire in the German positions on the North Ridge allowed a lone German holdout there to begin taking long-range pot shots at the American infantry, causing one casualty. This motivated Pixel Truppen then began dueling with a half-squad of Americans armed with semi-automatic Garands, and his single-bolt action weapon was inadequate to meet the volume of fire produced by his foes. With the Strummel threat neutralized, the Stuarts begin to shell the attacking German troops, forcing them to take cover. A determined section of German Pixel Truppen are undeterred and advance over the North Ridge to demonstrate the futility of making an unsupported attack on entrenched troops on the reverse slope. 
Successive attacks by follow-on troops fared no better. Over the next minute, the squad continues to advance over the ridge. 33 minutes into the game, the same German section continues its unsupported attack across the ridge line with the same results, confirming Einstein's definition of quantum insanity as doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Moving up towards Hill 1234, a team of scouts is ambushed by fire, apparently from the ruins. The troops in the ruins continue to fire on the American flank, creating additional casualties. And a steward is sent to take care of the problem. Over the next two minutes, the steward silences the German pixel troopen who are slowing the advance of 1st and 2nd platoon from their position near the ruins. After the loss of both the Strimmel and the section of infantry that attacked the reverse slope of the North Ridge, the attacking German pixel troopen are forced to withdraw under fire from the Stuarts. But there's one final act to play in this drama. A sudden German mortar barrage takes out one of the 30 caliber medium machine gun positions as well as inflicting casualties on nearby units. And after 35 minutes of gameplay, the scenario ends with a total U.S. victory. This shows a 209 attackers to 87 defenders, or a 2.4 to 1 attack to defender ratio. However, this includes the attacking German platoon that showed up at the end of the game. At the start of the game, it was approximately 209 attackers to about 54 defenders, or a 3.9 to 1 attack to defender ratio. With 29 casualties, the Americans suffered an 18.6% casualty rate. While higher than I anticipated, this is not bad given the strength of the German position and the terrain. The Germans suffered a 1.74 to 1 loss rate compared to the Americans. This is lower than I anticipated, but is within reason given the nature of the terrain. The only remaining enemy troops on the map at the end of the game are approximately one section remaining in the ruins and what was correctly estimated as a platoon sized force attacking from the northwest. Additionally, there is the single, well-concealed headquarters unit located on the south face of the North Ridge. This unit, which is equipped with the radio, is likely the spotter unit for the devastating mortar barrage of the last turn. Turning now to the hot wash, the evaluation of how well my plan worked. One way to evaluate a plan is to look at it through the lens of the principles of war. These are objective, offensive, mass, economy of force, maneuver, unity of command, security, surprise, and simplicity. How was my plan using these principles to guide the evaluation? Looking first at the things that went well, I think I had an accurate METTC. I accurately evaluated the mission and time constraints. I had a reasonably good evaluation of the terrain, and I accurately estimated the German force size and composition. I also accurately estimated the location of the main German positions. However, there were some gaps. I did not anticipate the German positions on the forward slope of the North Ridge. I also did not anticipate the German counterattack from the Northwest. Instead, I focused only on the possibility of an attack from the east. Turning now to the plan, I believe it was a good plan. It was flexible and allowed me to accomplish all my objectives while meeting various contingencies. It properly leveraged the U.S. advantages in armor and artillery, and it properly allocated forces to the various tasks. However, I misjudged the effectiveness of artillery against the prepared German positions and was too sparing with my artillery and my artillery bombardment time. This failure is notable, especially given the sheer amount of artillery I had available. Applying the principles of war, I believe I properly applied the principle of objective. I prioritized the main objectives of the North Ridge and Hill 1234. An argument could be made that because Hill 1234 was key terrain that dominated the North Ridge, I should have emphasized it and not directly attacked the North Ridge. If Hill 1234 was seized, the North Ridge would naturally fall. The counter-argument to this is that it would violate the principle of economy of force. I believe that the 
frontage needed for attacking Hill 1234 was insufficient for all the forces I had at my command. In other words, it would have been crowded and subject to heavy casualties from German artillery bombardment. Further, by allowing multiple angles of fire on various German positions, it assisted in taking the interlocking German fields of fire apart one by one and thereby better achieve the principle of mass. I believe my plan properly used the principles of economy of force and mass. I believe the use of 3rd platoon and 2 stewards to seize the North Ridge and 1st and 2nd platoons and the 2 stewards to seize the Hill 1234 objectives provided the overwhelming combat power to seize the objectives at a reasonable cost, as evidenced by the relatively low 18.7% casualty rate. Regarding the principle of simplicity, I believe this plan may have been in fact too complex in the real world given World War II technology. As I executed it, it required split second timing and perfect coordination, and I'm not sure that is realistic. In the game I had the XO stay with 3rd platoon and the CO of the company stay with 1st and 2nd platoon to help simulate some of the delegation of authority I would have done in the real world to help mitigate some of the complexity of the plan. There were limited opportunities to maneuver, but my plan did call for a flanking assault on Hill 1234, although it was never executed due to the game end. Additionally, I did maneuver to open up additional suppressive fire opportunities, for instance by sending a tank and observer to the west slope of Hill 1234 to provide fire support for the attack on the North Pass. Regarding the principle of security, I properly place an observation position on the right flank of 1st platoon on Hill 1234. This post would have detected a German attack from that direction, hopefully in time to send the Stuarts to deal with the threat. However, I had no flank guard for 3rd platoon, which is where the attack eventually developed. Because of the long lines of sight in this area, I'm not sure this is truly a failure. However, the fact that I didn't consider it a attack from this direction in my planning argues for this being a planning failure. Now in terms of things I could have done better, these are not necessarily things that are violations of the principles of war, but just areas that could possibly be improved on. First, I underestimated the time it would take to clear the North Ridge Line. I truly thought it would have fallen pretty quickly. In terms of gameplay, I was slow to realize that one of the units on the south face of the North Ridge Line was a leader unit. The fact that it hadn't fired at me should have been a tip-off, but I didn't pick up on it. That likely caused the heavy mortar casualties that I suffered on the last turn of the game. I was slow to have my troops take cover from the potential heavy artillery bombardment on Hill 1234. As soon as I saw those spotting rounds fall, I should have had them hide to avoid casualties. I had no counter plan for an attack from the northwest. But for the slowness of 3rd platoon's advance, I would have had no forces in the area to defend against that German attack. The plan called for 1st platoon's right flank to be pretty much up in the air. I had only the observation post watching the eastern flank of 1st platoon. Had the scout car survived, this may have been a good place to put it once the anti-tank gun was taken out. As I noted earlier, I was too sparing with my use of 105 and 81 millimeter mortar fire, especially with 81 millimeter smoke. And just as a thought, I'm not sure this is really a failure, but it might be worth considering putting a TRP on the North Ridge for artillery support. That position is actually very hard to see from the American line. With that said, I think the two TRP positions I did choose were valid, as both of them covered the main objective of Hill 1234 and covered the likely German anti-tank gun positions. One other thing I would have done differently in the game is to have used a jeep to quickly deploy a two-man scout team from 1st platoon to the base of Hill 1234 at the start of the game. Although I did have a scout team about 100 yards in front of 1st platoon, had the Germans deployed a machine gun at the base of Hill 1234, the scouts would have been unlikely to have detected it before 1st and 2nd platoon entered the kill zone. Sending the scout team well forward of the platoons would have allowed them to verify that the base of the hill was unoccupied. My failure to do this in the game gave the defenders an opportunity which fortunately they did not exploit in this game.
This concludes the AAR of the first scenario of the Triona campaign. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments on how I can improve these videos or on my strategy or tactics or just any thoughts about these videos, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.